In case you didn't get the memo, this is National Biz Business Women's Week. So I want to spend some time highlighting female-led organizations in generally male-dominated industries, especially organizations that are working to empower other women, which brings me to Victris Capital. It's an early-stage venture capital firm that invests in consumer-oriented companies that are led by women. This isn't just about doing the right thing, people. It's, it's for profit. It's a for-profit enterprise that will make money. There's still a lot of talent out there that's being squandered because of discrimination. But for Victress, that is the opportunity. Now, normally, I, I'd wait, want to ask a fund manager about their investments. And this is a venture capital fund, which means they're investing in early stage, privately held companies that some of them they can't really talk about. Let's get that straight. But let's take a closer look with Lori Cashman and Suzanne Norris, the founders and managing partners of Victress Capital. Learn more about what they're trying to do. Ms. Cashman and Ms. Norris, welcome to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. We're so excited to be here. Well, We're same, a huge the fans same. of yours. And what I want to know, uh, it is uh, National Business Women's Week, and it's the type of thing, it bugs the heck out of me. Do you know, I didn't know about it until I heard you were being booked. And what that says to me is not enough awareness, but it may also say something institutionally about where our country is that you're helping to change. That's right. And this is something we care deeply about, and we really appreciate the opportunity to share more with you and your viewers. Um, we came together to form Victress around a shared passion to support women-led businesses. And the truth is that female founders do have a hard time accessing capital because there's a massive funding gap. While women start 40% of companies in this country, they receive only 3% of venture capital funding. And while sometimes this makes sense, right? Not every business right. deserves venture capital funding. But when we encounter a founder who sees a huge market opportunity and she has a vision and a compelling business plan to execute around that vision, along with some early traction, we feel that that founder has a right to access that capital alongside anyone else. And we look at the statistics, we see that gender diverse teams outperform their all male counterparts on both top line and bottom line metrics. And so with that in mind, we came together to launch Victress to leverage our backgrounds and to help these female founders access capital and support them as they grow. I started the street.com for a while. We owned a terrific company called Bordex and sold to your money. I did study after study myself about women-led or women-dominated boards or boards that had more women. Mm -hmm. The outperformance was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. How is it the empirical data shows that? And yet we have 33 of the Fortune 500 are women, and women are still in very much minority in boards. Explain that to me if you're trying to make a profit. Well, it's a great question because you're right. The data across the board shows that whether you're a public company or a private company, if you have a gender balanced team in the boardroom or at the management level, you will outperform top line and bottom line. You know, but it's hard. In, in our industry in venture capital, 75% of the venture capital firms out there still don't have a female partner. So that is difficult. If you think of venture capital, we are making investments in early stage companies. We find those companies through our networks. Our networks are made with people that we either worked with or went to school with or we've um, you know, invested in. Right. And so those opportunities that come up are often homogeneous. And Lord, the, uh, no one gets your money unless they have a woman what, in prominence, the management. Right. The first filter for us is that there has to be at least one female on that founding team. Mm -hmm. In 19 of the 20 companies that we've invested in so far, it's been a female founder. Uh, or female co-founders. Um, that's really the first lens that we look for. Of course, we look at all diversity and measures, but, but gender being the first. In, in, in the meantime, when we look at different companies, Suzanne, we like talk about a Somersault, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of our staff, we have an almost all, <laughs> uh, an almost all female staff, and Regina Gilgis, executive producer. And we, you, know, well, you know why we do it? Because we pick the best people. That's why we do it. <laughs> right. And many of them have sampled uh, Daily Harvest and mm -hmm. like that. And uh, how do you get some visibility for these companies? Because they obviously are on the right track, uh, but it's early stage. How does an early stage company uh, Instagram, uh, Snap, uh, Twitter, what do you do? Uh, great question. We think, you know, first they have to understand there's a huge opportunity or white space for that product. So take Somersault. Um, the two founders came together. They saw an opportunity to form a women's travel wear and swimwear company. There really wasn't a dominant brand in that space. So that founding team, one had deep expertise on the op side, one had deep expertise on the branding side. They came together, formed Somersault. They used technology to really get the perfect fitting suit, and then they launched to market. And they did speak with influencers.
freelancers, they had early customers, they proved that product fit, they've got great retention rates, and they've grown that company and done a great job of leveraging the fit and um, the appeal for the brand and what it stands for, which is empowering women and giving them clothes that make them feel great. Now, uh, I just spent a lot of time with Mark Benioff last week. He's the co-CEO of Salesforce, and he wrote a book called Trailblazers. Pretty amazing. Uh, I've always felt that he's a person who really understood the ethos, understood what's right. He was challenged directly by two women at his company that he said that, that said he was underpaying them. Sure enough, department by department, vice president by vice president, it was discrimination. Do you see it constantly? Uh, you know, I think we see it on the uh, as a funders on the venture firm side or in private equity firms. We do believe that. Um, Sometimes the metric that gets the most uh, focus and attention is, do you have a female partner? But what they don't do is they peel back and say, is the carried interest, is your compensation on par with your male counterparts? Mm -hmm. And we see that time after time, if women do take time off um, you know, to, uh, to be at home with kids, mm -hmm that there's a real penalty right. that they pay for that. And you can never really get back on track once you give that up. It drives me crazy. If you're not a guy, well, you're no good. And if you, uh, if you are a guy, well, you're pretending. I mean, <laughs> it, it, women are in a terrible spot in some ways. We've got to change it. You guys are trying to change it. Mm -hmm. We are. Well, I think you're going to have success. Because <laughs> you know why? Because you're making a profit. And that's, unfortunately or fortunately, is the best proof of what you're doing. We that's the proof agree. of concept. Yes. Yep. All yes. right, that's Lori Cashman and Suzanne Norris. I hope you like that as much as I do. The founders and managing partners of Victorious Capital for National Business Women's Week. All I can say is about time. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.